Lots of people ask me about what subjects to do in grade 11 and 12 or college to score yourself a place in med school. Let's talk about it. student in Australia. Welcome to my channel about medicine, med school and being a doctor in Australia. If you're new here, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button and if we've met before, I'm so happy you're back. Today, this video is for you if you'd like to use your year 11 and 12 study and achievements to contribute to your med school application. There are a few different pathways into med for which you can do this. Number one, you can do it through an undergrad or Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery course, an MBBS course. Number two, you can use your subject to apply for a provisional entry pathway into a postgrad course. The postgrad course in medicine is the medical doctor or MD course. A provisional entry pathway officially links your undergrad course with your postgraduate medical doctor course. Sun is in my face. It's probably fun. Now a little catch here is that to use your college achievements to apply for these courses, it usually has to be within a few years of finishing your college study. Beyond the university's dictated time period, your ATAR will no longer be able to be recognised as a part of your application and you'll need to do further study to support your application. For completeness and an attempt to raise your awareness of as many options that are available to you, I'd like to mention that while your year 11 and 12 performance can be used to get you into these courses, they're not the only way in. Generally, you can use your tertiary, aka a university studies to get you into these courses too. However, some institutions may preference or only consider year 12 leaders. Now also in the spirit of completeness, other ways of getting into med school include the direct entry into the postgrad MD medical doctor course, which you're only eligible for after doing tertiary university level studies otherwise. For a heads up, this video won't be focused on those of you who want to take that direct entry pathway. For this pathway, institutions will consider your academic merit via your GPA, not your college subject or ATAR. In the future, I'm going to do a more comprehensive video on pathways to getting into med school, which will include these direct pathways into your postgrad med course, which have different entry requirements. Do let me know if you want to see that in the comments below. It would be really helpful to me if you let me know if this video is helpful for you and if you'd like to see more like this by giving me a thumbs up. Now let's get into it. If you're aiming to use your college subjects to get you into a med course, there are a few things you should consider that I'd love to talk to you about today. Firstly, I want to talk to you guys about prerequisite subjects. Secondly, I want to talk to you about ATAR points. At the end of the video, I'm going to share with you guys what I personally picked for college and how it all worked out for me. It's important to me that I mention that the information that I'm giving you guys today is based on my understanding of the system at this point of time, which is understandably limited. I can't claim to be an expert, but I want to do my best to help you guys out. Hopefully this video can be a stepping stone into you understanding how the system can work better for you. And you can take the concepts and verify them based on the specific university that you're aiming to get into and your personal state and circumstances. My bottom line is please, please do your own research so that you don't miss out on the university and the job and the future of your dreams. If you're just not sure where to look, comment below and hopefully I or some other lovely person in the comments can help you out. Let's talk about prerequisites. Some universities might require you to have done one or more college subjects before they'll accept you into your course. Nope. Some universities <coughs> done one or more college subjects. Some universities will require you to have done one or more specific college subjects before they'll accept you into their course. These subjects are usually related to science, English and or math, but it's different for each university. You'll need to look at the university's websites that offer the medical courses that you're interested in to see what these subjects are. While you're there, also take note as to whether the university requires that you meet a certain grade level in that subject to meet the standard. Now something that I really want to make you guys aware of is that some of these prerequisite subjects from the university might have prerequisite subjects of their own. For for example, at my university, the University of Tasmania, one of the required prerequisites was chemistry. Now to do chemistry at my college, the college actually required me to have successfully completed another subject, physical science, before they allowed me into that chemistry course. So because my university required me to have completed chemistry, I needed to make sure that I had done physical sciences in year 11 so that I could get chemistry done before I finished my two years of college. If you have your heart set on medicine, and especially if you have your heart set on a specific med school, I highly recommend you going to their websites as early as possible and working out what these subjects are and what pathways they require. I don't want you guys to miss out. After looking in those prerequisite subjects, we need to think about how we're going to build your ATAR score to meet your med school requirements. 
requirements. Most universities that offer undergrad med courses or those provisional courses that transition you into the postgrad med courses will require you to meet a minimum ATAR to be considered. And in many cases, that score will affect how they rank you to offer you an interview or a place in that course. Your ATAR score is built from your best individual scores from your subjects in year 11 and 12. ATAR is actually calculated by scaling the unique scoring system used in your particular state. The way the score is built and aggregated is different in different states. It's important to note that some states will require certain subjects to form a part of that score, for example an English subject, and some states weight the score of your individual subjects differently. For example, the fourth and fifth subjects that make up your score might be made to account for say a 15% total in your score, and other subjects before that might have a heavier weighting. Some states will allow all scores to be weighted equally and don't require any certain subjects to be included in that score. So you can make that score up from any subjects you wish to choose. The ATAR score required to be considered for med is different across different universities in Australia once again. It's my understanding that at my university they will only consider students with an ATAR of 95 or above, unless perhaps special circumstances apply. In contrast, it's my understanding that James Cook University doesn't require you to meet a minimum ATAR at all. Again, I would beg you to look up the specific university pages that you want to apply for to make sure that you don't miss out through not knowing these details. Now if your ATAR score is high enough, you might actually be eligible for what's called a guaranteed place at some universities. But that's a talk for another video. Let's talk about a few specific things in terms of picking subjects to build this ATAR score for your entry into med school. Firstly, you don't have to be an absolute superstar to get you an ATAR that will get you into most med courses. For your subjects to add up to a sufficient ATAR, you don't necessarily need to get straight A's in all of your subjects. You just have to do reasonably well across most of them. College can be really hard sometimes and I want you guys to know that you have room to make mistakes and you don't necessarily need to be perfect all of the time. I want you, I need you to not panic or give up when things don't go perfectly, which you probably find is the case for most of us. Your ATAR can still be great with many, many mistakes. Now secondly, it's important to note that it pays to be a little bit strategic when picking out your college subjects, because some pre-tertiary subjects will offer more points per grade than another. If you're not familiar with the Australian college system, different subjects score differently. For example, an A or EA, the highest achievement in chemistry, will usually give you a different amount of points from the same A or EA in English, for example. Not only that, but scores offered for different grades in a subject also vary by year. So that same A or EA in chemistry in 2017, for example, might score very differently from an A or EA in chemistry in 2018. The scores change in these ways because they're dependent on the performance of students collectively each year. They're moderated, i.e. they're modified based on how people do relatively around you, instead of being based on an absolute score in your tests and exams. Now I can imagine you're thinking, well then Beck, how exactly do I work out which subjects I should choose to translate into enough points to give me a sufficient ATAR for med school? Fair question. Previously, Tasmania, where I live, has actually put out charts that you could just Google and they would tell you how each of the subjects with each of their grades have scored over the previous year. I think they would give us up to 10 years back or something like that. It's my understanding that an equivalent chart isn't offered by all other states and I'm not actually even sure if Tasmania even gives this list out anymore. If that's the case in your state, word of mouth from college teachers, or recent students might be your best bet in terms of getting some information that might help you narrow down which subjects you want to pick. Because each state operates differently in many ways, this is another area where it's difficult for me to get a good grasp on the whole system to make generalizations. I really want to work towards this though for us, so if you have any information that you think you can share, I would love for you to share it down below. <laughs> Lastly, on the ATAR, I just want to make sure that you guys know that you don't have to restrict your college subjects to subjects like math, science and English, subjects that you think might traditionally be closely related to medicine. The universities will not give preference based on individual college subjects that you do outside of their specified prerequisites. They just look at the number that is your ATAR. Now this is important to note for a number of different reasons. Firstly, I think it ties back to you getting a good score. I think you'll find that the subjects that you do best in will be the same subjects that you love. It's a win-win. Do the subjects you love, get a good score, get your way into med school with that great ATAR. That is my second point, that I think it's so wonderful for you to be able to go to college and do subjects that you're actually interested in, especially subjects that aren't necessarily directly, obviously related to medicine. Because if all goes well, medicine is what you'll 
you'll be doing for the next many years to come and you will have a little bit less time to explore the things you love. My younger sister, for example, has just finished her first year of engineering after getting a great ATAR score for her entry. One of the subjects that contributed to this impressive ATAR was a subject called Outdoor Leadership. Not maths, not science, not any of your traditional engineering related subjects outdoor leadership. She had a blast and at the same time earned her way into the degree of her dreams. You can do that too. For this last section, I know a bunch of you guys would love to know what I did at college to get myself into med school. As you can see from what we've talked about, I can't quite give you a list of subjects that you should do that will get you a good score. It's going to be different for every person. Hopefully sharing my reasons can help you reason your way through it too. English communications and chemistry were subjects that I chose because they were prerequisite to the med school that I wanted to get into. As I explained, chemistry automatically put physical sciences on my list of subjects to do as well. After that I chose math methods and math specialised as subjects that I really enjoy and subjects that also tend to score really well. I chose biology because I was genuinely interested in it and I thought it was a subject that would start to form a good foundation for me going into med school. In year 12 I actually started physics but after a few weeks I decided to move out of that class and into another class. The story behind that I think is important and it's something that I'd like to share with you guys at some point but it's probably a bit much for this video. Ultimately I swap from physics into another pre-tertiary math subject. At that time it was called math applied and now I believe it's called math general. Now it's not quite the type of maths that I tend to really enjoy but I did move into that subject strategically because it was a subject that scored well and a subject that I didn't have to put as much effort into as all my other subjects which I was and believed I would continue to find quite difficult. Having my hands full with chemistry, biology and math specialised I was very happy to have a subject that I didn't have to study as much for to get a good grade and ultimate point scoring at the end that I could fall back on if I didn't happen to score very well in those other subjects that I found tough. It was a safe subject for me amongst a bunch of risky subjects when considering that I wanted to meet this score to get into med school. In year 11 I actually joined the school production to fill up my fourth subject to make me a full-time student. That was the year I was doing my English, my math methods and my physical sciences. I thought it was better for me to not overload myself in this first year in this completely new system while I was trying to juggle the other parts of my life, working as a group fitness instructor and working at my local supermarket. In most cases I would say that all of your college subjects don't need to be so serious so don't be afraid to take a few left to field subjects as long as you make sure you've got a bit of a safety net to make up your ATAR points. So that is how I put together my college subjects for this one component of my med school application. I have so much I want to talk to you guys about in terms of my path into med school if you'd like to hear it but again that is definitely for another video. It is a lot to think about and I know it can be a stressful time for a lot of us. Please note that if your subjects and your score don't ultimately allow you to take this pathway into med school after college for whatever reason. It is not the end of the story for medicine for you. There are multiple other different pathways that people take successfully all the time across Australia. As always, if you have something to add, if I've overlooked something or if I've said something that's just plain wrong, let me know in the comments below. There's seemingly nowhere else on the internet right now that gathers up this information for you guys. So I want to bring that to you, but it does make it tricky for me to verify all of the information. I would love it if you guys can share what you know so that we can all learn. If nothing else, write to me in the comments what college subject you're picking for next year. I would love to hear what you guys are all up to. All my luck for now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.